Greetings, everyone. So, you all might be wondering why I'm kind of staring at these low-poly trees here. And what I'm actually doing. Well, this is a bit of a different video. Because today, I'm going to be talking about some very unique trains assets that I have uh, stumbled upon. As well as a bit of the uh, history of the real project they're based on. That, of course, is the Breitsperbahn stuff of Project Germania. Now, first things first, there's a, a couple engines here. This isn't everything right now, of course. But I'm going to start by talking about these three engines in particular. So, right here I see we have, like, a little snowplow. Which, it, it's a cute model, I'll admit. Um, then again, before I really talk in more detail about these trains, I should probably, um, answer some basic questions. Like, you all are probably wondering, well, what is the Breitsperbahn, for example? Well, let me go ahead and show it by putting a conventional locomotive next to it. Because, essentially, the Breitsperbahn was a project that was, uh started in 1940s Germany, maybe even earlier, and it was first proposed, I believe, by Adolf Hitler. Now, already, um, some of you guys are probably asking, what the hell am I on about? Well, the Breitsverbahn was basically one of Hitler's big grand visions for if the Nazi Reich was able to conquer, you know, most of the world like they had planned, uh, the Breitsperbahn was kind of his idea for how they would get around. Now, what's interesting about these is, you probably notice, uh, this track here has four rails, well, that's because the Breitsperbahn is absolutely massive compared to a conventional train. Like, just looking at it, you can see that the rail cars are almost uh, twice as large as a standard gauge locomotive here. Which is one of the things that fascinates me about this uh, whole system type. Anyways, um, in terms of locomotives, there were several actual planned engines, and the reason I have these three here, in terms of Bright's for Bond engines, is because these are not ones that were actually planned. As far as I can find. Because um, we have a snowplow here, which, while practical, I know of zero schematics or anything that references them uh, planning specific snowplow locomotives like this one. Which, let's listen to the whistle here. Yeah, um, each of these trains have their own whistle, but yeah, this is like a dedicated snowplow. And I have not found it. Anything in, uh, any plans for a dedicated plow locomotive? As I have quite a bit of the schematics on standby, and standby. Those will be shown later, of course, when I get to the actual real designs and whatnot that were made for Project Germania. Um, we have this locomotive. Which appears to be the flagship locomotive of Project Germania. As it says here, that she has a Project Germania logo on her. Of course, I will be linking the Project Germania stuff in the description. Um, these assets are actually by, uh, I think he goes by Kyle Strasbourg. Um, I don't know how to actually, Strasbourg? I don't know. Um, but yeah, Kyle Strasberg, Strasbourg, I don't fully know how to pronounce his name, so I apologize if I'm butchering it, but these assets are by him and his crew, although I haven't seen any new assets updated because I'm on their email list uh, in quite a while, so I don't know if it's still active or not, but this engine here seems to be kind of the flagship one of the, his project since it wears the actual, uh, logo and whatnot on it. And then we also have this neat thing, this uh, rail gun, which is self-propelled. Now, sure, there were plans for rail-mounted uh, 
weapons for the Brights for Bond network, but none of this uh, self-propelled nature were ever planned as far as I know. So I think this is probably one of the more interesting pieces, and of these fictional units, this is probably actually my favorite. Of course, this fictional section is going to be the shortest of the video, since we have a lot to cover, and I have a lot of, uh, you know, stuff I want to talk about regarding the Brights Bourbon and whatnot. Uh, I do think this is interesting, though, to look at, because it's got a gun on each end. Um, in other words, as well, the texturing is interesting. Uh, it kind of reminds me of, uh, on some of these models, of the texturing you see in, like, Roblox or something. So I think there is room for improvement. Of course, you can actually cab view some of these engines as well, but you can't exactly uh, move unless you enable free cam like I have. Because there's no way or other camera angles on some of these engines. Like, this one doesn't have any other camera angles unless you, you know, enable the free cam move, which then allows you to actually see out the front. And the plow is the same here, kind of. Yeah, the plow is unfortunately the same. And, as seen, the engines don't really have detailed interiors, which is unfortunate, but you'll have that sometimes. Unfortunately. I mean, even my models that do exist publicly don't have detailed interiors, so I can't exactly get too upset as is. It's kind of a missed opportunity, but at the same time, I'm understanding of why. Because apparently, I think, bleh, interiors are hard. And no, this video is not scripted, by the way. So, I'm kind of just rolling with it on the fly and talking history and whatnot on the fly. Something I like doing. Anyways, let's get to the uh, realistic designs, shall we? Um, so over here we have a bunch more of the, uh, locomotives that are actually realistic, uh, like this one. I have found schematics of, uh, engine of this design, which is three pieces, of course. But I have actually found, uh, blueprint schematics, whatever you want to call them, of a locomotive of this styling. It actually shares the, uh, same schematic page with this uh, big three-piece locomotive in the uh, Orient Express colors. Which seems to be one of the icons of the uh, Brights for Bonn, as an example. Um, but yeah, as with this one, again, you don't really get the detailed tab, unfortunately. Like, if you even go inside... Like, sure, you can... Ooh, okay, so you can kind of with free cam mode. I like that. <laughs> um, with this one, the Orient Express looking one, uh, this is kind of the cab area. I mean, it does have the engine details in some of them, so I kind of like that little nod to detail, but you don't have any cab controls or anything, which is kind of sad. But I can't do much about it. I didn't make these assets after all. is just kind of interesting. And then, of course, you also have two coaches on it, which is kind of cool to see. And then you have this DMU as another one, which there are plans for a similar train, not to this exact design, which seems to look more like a uh, bi-level variant of the DR1. Let me just pull up the DR1, for example. Because this looks kind of like a bi-level variant of the DR1 when you put them next to each other and how they jut out. Only difference is the cab design for. But, yeah. The only difference is the front design, but they do have two similarities. Of course, you can cab view in uh, most of these engines, but sadly the bi-level here doesn't have really any details either. I'm going to shut up the actual DR1, because that is loud. And, yeah. Of course, um, I will also be showing these schematics as well. 
because yeah, this one, uh, there is a similar DMU, which I think was longer than my setup here of just four cars. And I think that's rather interesting to look at because you can see how the front design is, you know, a little more angled than this. There's also more doors along the uh, locomotives than uh, this one as well. And of course, with the Orient Express colored one, and this one right here as well, you kind of see that the uh, freight one, the darker one, is uh, on the top of the schematic here. And the passenger one in the Orient Express colors is on the uh, bottom of the schematic, which is kind of interesting to look at, because a lot of the details are actually more accurate for these ones, including the bogey positioning on most of these cars. I think it's just an interesting little thing. Obviously, I love the history behind uh, studying this stuff, since the Brights Brabant never actually got constructed, of course. Whew. And then, of course, we have uh, the three tank engines here, which obviously do have IRL inspiration from the real blueprints, at least these two that do, for certain. The only thing that's different is uh, the actual cabs on both of them. The uh, cab structure would have gone down all the way to the uh, red bit here. So that is a difference between these uh, tank engines and the actual planned Brights Bourbon ones, is just the slight design changes, but other than that, I'd call these pretty close to the actual blueprints, or schematics. Because if you look over them, uh, it does appear that the uh, tanks do actually go down a little, if you will. It's just an interesting note. Then you have this engine, which I think I found a schematic of, but I don't have the schematic saved. But this is kind of a factory engine, and it looks similar enough to these tank engines anyway. Though it's kind of uh, half and half on realistic and fiction. It's pretty interesting. Um, I, I, as I said, if Kyle is watching this, then I, I do applaud his current efforts. And if he wants someone on the team who can help make more locomotives, I'm more than willing to join. Because I have a locomotive that I'm working on in Blender, but I've kind of indefinitely paused it for now. Now, if I had to say what my favorite is of the real designs, though, I'm going to say it's this uh, DMU set. Because I, I love the green. I, I wish it had a detailed interior, but other than that, I love the green <laughs> used on it. And it just kind of looks nice. Even if it's missing some details to be accurate. Now, obviously these models are still very fun to play with. Like, I'm on one of Kyle's dedicated routes, the uh, racetrack route as well. And so it's probably the best for showcasing these things. Anyways, let's move on to the rolling stock. Because there is a lot of rolling stock to talk about. <laughs> Hmm. So, let's talk about the goods and the bads. First off, uh, let's talk about some of the uh, details here, because I've got some gripes with the rolling stock, uh, especially these boxcars here, which I know boxcars were planned. I've seen boxcars in concept art for the actual Brights Ravon. I just lack schematics, but the, that isn't the gripe. The gripe is, if I do edit trains, go here, why why can I put shipping containers in the boxcars? Why? Why can I load, why is the default set to load shipping containers in the boxcars? Like, how does this 40 foot container even get in this boxcar? It, it doesn't make sense. And I know I can change these before y'all uh, start screaming at me in the comments. I know I can change these to be updated to different load types, but just... If the roofs are able to, you know, fold, or 
whatever they uh, do, uh, you know, how they open in the uh, some of the uh, concept art, I-, I wouldn't be as, you know, have as many gripes with this. But why is this the default when the cars aren't designed for that? Um, clearly aren't designed for that. It's just bewildering to me that this choice was made. Like, you can load them in here, too. Which I guess makes a little more sense because of the doors, but, uh... Getting them out's gonna be difficult. Getting them in's gonna be difficult. And that's the default for all of the box cars. But they do have good designs, I'll give them that. I just kind of find it sad that, you know, missed opportunity here. In terms of the loads and whatnot. <sighs> now, let's also talk about the goods. Other than the fact that I do like these designs. It's like, these bi-level box cars are pretty damn cool too, but... Again, they're set for containers, which makes no sense, unfortunately. Especially due to the door sizes, but, you know, it's fine. I can update that, as I said, because you can actually update by adding different products, so it's not too big of a deal, it's just a missed opportunity. Um, before we get to this caboose here, I'm going to also talk about the uh, tanker here, which actually is one of the most realistic uh, ones here is this tanker car because there are schematics for a tanker car and i'll be showing those up on screen as well as like a comparison because there are actual blueprints that exist of a tanker car and this is relatively close to those blueprints it's got some minor differences and you know differences or flaws whatever you call them here and there but other than that it's pretty close to the actual tanker so props that's a good job um i don't have schematics on hand of the gondolas but i do know they were planned but i really like the gondola because the load actually you know loads like if i uh you know lower down the amount then you know the load actually changes height and i really like that about this car because you can update the uh, load height and everything on the gondola, which is really nice to have as a feature. And, of course, let's look at these flat cars, which I have gripes with flat cars especially, because, again, let's just look. <sighs> Why? Why do you have this giant flat car, and the default is only a single 40-foot container? It makes no sense. If you look at the actual plans for the Brights for Bond flat cars, you'll also note that the containers were uh, planned to be a little bit more in the uh, vein of the Japanese containers that you see on some of their freight trains, really. With their uh, interesting... Uh... <sighs> positioning method and smaller designs. Like... This is another missed opportunity in my eyes. Because instead you just have, you know, this. When in reality, uh, these were designed to carry parallel containers like the uh, blueprint here shows. Like, this was just a kind of other missed opportunity, so it's kind of sad, but... Eh, not much I can do, uh... Kyle, if you're watching this, uh, please, uh, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just trying to give an honest review regarding the history and whatnot of the uh, Brights for Bond design, as well as these trains models that you have created. And now, this one, I'm not complaining as much, because this actually makes more sense to have maybe one or two containers on if you're moving these American-style shipping containers. <sighs> Jeez, what is with me and yawning today? Anyways. The only other thing is, again, though, and when you look at them from above, you can still stack more containers side by side with each other as well. But, you know, that's kind of a missed opportunity, but it's not as bad on the smaller car. 
as it is is blatantly obvious on the large one here. And like, yeah. And then we get to the caboose, you know. And the caboose also made to load 20 foot containers. Uh, this is supposed to be a caboose? It feels more like a transition car between, like, box cars and either the flat cars or gondolas. Because typically a caboose is historically meant to house the crew of the train. Not cargo. Like, historically speaking, anyway, the caboose was always meant to house, like, auxiliary crew for your train. So, the, the fact that this is a cargo caboose is very unusual to me. As someone who studies uh, railroading. Like, if I get out a caboose. Uh, if I get out a proper caboose. Not the other one that I'm going to talk about later, for example. Because that will appear later in this video. Uh, if I get out a proper caboose. Or even just a brake van. Like, historically speaking. These are meant to carry more crew. In them. These are meant to carry the crew. Of your train. So that they can exchange in, like, areas where you might not have crew readily available or something. And it's so the crew can travel with their train. So why, why was it built for cargo? Now, uh, that's just me being a rivet counter, of course. But it's still something that I find weird as a design choice. It does look like it's a better transition car between the uh, box cars and flat cars, or gondola car and box cars. Whew, simply over that design. Anyways, now that the uh, freight cars are covered, let, let's talk about the passenger cars, which I'd argue are probably some of the best assets of this, other than the uh, tanker car here, which I really love the tanker here in the gondola. These passenger cars are really well done. Like, sure, they don't have a detailed interior or anything, but they're really well done. Like, they are pretty close to the actual uh, schematics that I have in some cases. Like, sure, these uh, Orient Express ones are a bit short comparatively to the uh, other more local one, if you will. But they still look the part relatively nice. Like, they still work the part really well and are more accurate than uh, some of the freight cars, even. Of course, this is an outlier. The observation car here is an interesting design. And I do like the uh, design of it. Uh, it features these two open observation decks, which I think is a neat little design choice as well. It doesn't have a roof on it, which is kind of sad, but, you know. It's still a nice car. Like, again, I love the color. I just wish I had a more detailed interior. Although, I don't know of any observation cars like this that exist in the uh, Brights for Bond schematics, so this feels like it is a fictional car. But I do at the same time really like it. Because it's just interesting. Anyways, there is one more asset that I haven't spoken about yet. And that is because this asset is rather broken, unfortunately. And that is this massive piece that I'm putting together right now. I'm unsure of how to actually fix it, but this one is unfortunately a bit more uh, broken. Because when you do, you know, that isn't where I wanted to be. When you do place this down and look at it, I like that it uses the catenary button. As you know, the uh, barrel positioning. But when you try to move it, this happened. And yeah, that isn't exactly a pleasant sound. 
So yeah, unfortunately, the Holenfjord is uh, broken. So that's just kind of a little unfortunate side detail. However, I will acknowledge that these are not the only Breitsperbahn trains to exist for Trains Railroad Simulator. As someone I know on Discord actually made a different one for his own track. And uh, he let me have access to it. He just calls it the Big Train. It's not at all perfect by any means. It, As we see, it has some flaws. But it also, too, is based on a real design from the uh, Brights for Bond schematics. In fact, this is based off probably the most iconic and well-known Brights for Bond train of the uh, bunch. Now, obviously, it even has its own end car, which isn't, you know, the best, but he tried. This is also extremely old, if I recall correctly. This is like early Trains Railroad Simulator years, so early game content that he made. Um, but yeah. I added the uh, Combine Razor Train Horn to it that exists for uh, trains because I thought, why not? The cab also isn't... Even though the cab has details and stuff, it isn't accurate by any means. And also, the cab is in a very weird position. Because the cars have cabs as an interior, per se, but not the locomotive. Which I think is weird. But, you know, it's alright. This is actually meant to go with the track type that, uh... He made for something else, which I already hinted at having. That would be the... Um, let me place it down behind this, because this is a pretty big set of assets. That would be his super train. That would be a Wolfie's Wolf's uh, super train. Which is based off the Brights for Bond, but also from an American, a failed American TV series of the same name. Which, it's a nuclear-powered Brights for Bond, essentially. And I think that's something else interesting, because that's the most recent, quote-unquote, plan we have for it. Is the result of this TV show called Super Train. Which is pretty interesting. And actually, uh, most of these cars do have interiors as well. I'm just uh, placing down a lot of the cars right now because there are a lot of cars. And a good amount of them do have interiors. I think almost all of his cars for the Super Train have interiors. That have some form of detail even. Which is more than what the, uh, you know, more than what the uh, other has. The uh, Bright Spurbon of Project Germania has. Most of these have an interior. And I really like it because they have some cool interiors and Easter eggs. I'll, I'll show off a few uh, interiors for y'all, of course. Because, hey, why not, since I'm talking about it. And I, I really like the quality of the Super Train here. It, it is probably my favorite train's asset that was made. Other than some of the Brights for Bond stuff. For uh, Project Germania. If I just uh, put the fact that... Because uh, he did make a caboose, which is fictional. There was no such caboose in the show. He also, of course, made... Put down this club car real quick because i don't think i placed one yet he also made a proper end car for it which the end car has a few secrets as well this train has some easter eggs and secrets and whatnot um uh all the cars should be available on the download station as well for the super train so if you are looking for the super train uh pretty much all the cars should be on the download station I again added the Razor Train Horn, but 
when you look at the interior, you have, you know, detailed cab, I like. You have, you know, this car is, eh, in terms of interior. But this car has a good interior. And if you enable free cam mode like I have, you can actually walk around inside of it, which is another plus. The coach, detailed interior. All of these interiors are, of course, for the top floors. But they're pretty cool. Um, if you go to this car, uh, hold on, yeah. The star doesn't really have anything, uh, you know, special. Test car does have an interior. The theater has an interior, which is pretty fucking awesome, if you ask me. Even though you are standing right in the middle of it, the theater does have an interior, which is pretty cool. And of course, most of these cars do have interiors. They're pretty similar. Uh, the pool car has a swimming pool. Which is nice. The dining car has a very cute little interior. And the sleeper car even has beds. Like, this is a detailed train here. The end car does not really have a good interior, or well, really any interior right now, but it is at least show accurate. And of course, the caboose is an interesting car, even... Ooh, the caboose does have an interior? Interesting, I did not realize the caboose had an interior. It's very much super train themed. Which makes this set of assets pretty damn cool. There's also a disco car. Which, uh... I'm not gonna place down because I'm gonna get copyrighted to high hell if I do. Actually, you know what? I'll risk the copyright strike. I'll risk the copyright. Simply because I know some people will like it. It doesn't have an interior, though. But yeah, it does play music. I'm not gonna let it play the whole song though, because spoilers. But if you all want to check this, uh, these assets out, I will speak to a uh, wolf. But I believe all of them are on the download station. So that's a little uh, exciting thing. Anyway. There are also some other routes for Project Germania, which I have downloaded as well, of course. Because Kyle does have a... In terms of at least going back to the original here, there is a route for the... Uh, as a regular test track, and there is also a snowy route. And for Wolf's uh, Super Train, there are some other routes... Well, there is one route that he has on the download station, as far as I know. So, I'll, um, yeah. I will be linking a lot of this stuff in the uh, description, of course. And if you guys like this type of content, where I talk about the train's assets here, and uh, some of their history for some stuff, like the uh, Bright Spurbon here, or even other trains uh, stuff, please, let me know. Because I like talking history. Even if it is uh, unscripted and uh, completely random like it is today. Um, yeah, I do hope you all enjoyed. Please uh, like, subscribe, comment down below if you did. Thank you all very much for watching, and farewell.